Welcome back guys, I got another video for you. This is one that I recorded in the beginning of 2019. You're gonna see how I convert a semi-hermetic compressor over to 134A from uh, Hot Shot. I believe originally it was probably R12, uh, but uh, this system here when I showed up was void of refrigerant and it was cycling off the low pressure switch. To uh, find the leak, I went ahead and pumped it up with nitrogen. The nitrogen that's in the system is the pressure that I'm also going to use to push the oil out. And uh, there's several different ways to get the oil out uh, on a semi-hermetic compressor. You can use the same pump that I used to pump the oil into it uh, to actually siphon it out. Uh, I've also recently picked up a little uh, hand pump for like 10 to 15 bucks from AutoZone where you can stick it down in there and just self-primes and pulls the oil out, which is a real simple way of doing it also. If you have any questions for me on the video, feel free to either email me or leave a comment down below. If you look down in the notes section, you'll see my email. You'll also see links to my tools that I use in my videos and several other things. There's a little arrow. Just click on that. It'll pull it down and you can actually see a lot of the things that I'm asked for generally. It's all there. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom and all the links are right there. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, the compressor was short cycling on and off, on and off, on and off. And uh, wasn't really much Freon worthwhile to keep. And unfortunately, it's 414B. So I uh, seen the oil down here more than anywhere. That's where the detector was picking things up at, but it looks like I didn't have enough pressure to get. I'm gonna do a quick search here and make sure. Well, that's where I kept picking it up with my detector. Boy, we got all kinds of freaking leaks, don't we? Good grief. Got it on both nuts. Yep, just mainly those two nut busters there. I am, I suppose I could try tighten it. Usually when it boils down to it, you've about got to just redo the flare. But we'll see if we can't tighten it up and see how it does. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and convert this. This is 414B right now. Uh, we're going to put a new filter dryer in. We're going to have to take the oil out. It's AV oil. Uh, we're going to front seat the valves. Put a little piece of copper in there. Uh, seal around the spout there where the oil will be filled in. And uh, basically let the uh, pressure push the oil out. And then we'll uh, pump in the POE oil. I tightened up the flare fittings. I need to get my soap and go back in there and see if that sealed it up. They were pretty loose. Okay, like I said, we're gonna front seat this valve to take the uh, pressure off the compressor. So anyhow, we got the quarter inch line. It's going all the way down to the bottom. Got her going down in the oil. Okay, we'll have to put a cap on it. That way the pressure don't come flying out there. And we just want a little bitty bit, not much. I build up pressure and I'll push it all out. It'll be easy sleazy. Get that cool. Not bad for one hand. We got our POE oil here. I've had this thing for 18 years and barely ever used it because I didn't do a lot of refrigeration after I bought it. And what I did is perched a little bit of my hose and got all the moisture and crap out of the hose that's in there and now we're going to pump it in. Alright, we got the alkaline benzene oil marked out, R134A. Got uh, that sealed up, we just sprayed it, we got 200 pounds against the uh, suction side, so that's never going to uh, see that much pressure. So it's sealed, and we got the top of the compressor uh, labeled as POE. We just kicked it on. I went ahead and weighed three pounds in to kind of get it started, and uh, obviously it's gonna shut off, so we're gonna have to add some more to it. Just cleared the sight glass. It's six pounds, 11 ounces. It doesn't look like it's very big, but I'm gonna let it stabilize for a second and see if that thing stays solid. And I'm gonna add between 10 and 15% to it. Uh, it's warm back here right now because we have all these heaters, but 
you know, there's a good chance too that this big old monster door here could be left open and then it'd be cold as it is outside, which would put us under charge. So we're gonna set her up uh, just like you would if it was an outside unit. Okay, our pressure's looking pretty good. Got a nice solid sight glass. We've got seven pounds, five ounces. We'll let it calculate it out to be in. Everything's labeled properly. We're gonna test to make sure it pumps down and doesn't go into a negative. And we gotta check that inside TXB. Oil's okay. Right where the other one's at. It was higher earlier when I was actually starting it up. Thought I overcharged it. So it's moving around a little bit. I may, uh, may you know, just to come back and double check everything. All right, right now we're at 15. Notice my bypass tube is really, or I should say equalizer tube, is really uh, letting some through. Uh, we're definitely feeding. I'm kind of just going to watch it for a bit because it was a little higher earlier. It very easily could be hunting around, it's hard to say, but I'd like to see a maybe closer to 10 area. I'm going to wait before I go jump in the gun. we got to back it out counterclockwise if you're looking at the stem towards the head. So. Making a couple small adjustments and she just did a nose dive down to zero. And then uh, came back up. I went ahead and took a, about a quarter of a turn back uh, back out. She jumped back up to 10, so she's a sensitive little burger. Right, it's 33 in here. I have 11 degrees superheat. It was at 10 earlier. Somewhere between 8 and 10 is the norm. Because it can act stupid and change on you, I'm going to go ahead and just stop there. Uh, it's obviously gotten down to temperature. We're going to call this thing a day. It's time to go home. And uh, obviously it's working, so there was 10 again. So before I end up causing it to uh, go wacky and start going all over the place, I was moving her in super, super small increments and waiting for a while, wait for a while. I've noticed you cannot rush it. I didn't believe it, but I'm telling you what, you will believe if you go jumping too quick. Because it seems like you put that valve into a, uh, a freaking frenzy she will take forever to settle back down. All right, the defrost clock was set at like 40 minutes. I'm a little leery about changing things, but I went ahead and just took it to 55. I like 60 minutes twice a day, um, and uh, I went ahead and set the clock. Then I made sure on the thermostat that I marked where it was at before I moved it. I lined a pointer up to the uh, thermostat, and I put it right back to where it was. One thing I've learned is you change anything, they may notice it and then they call back even though there's nothing wrong. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I want to thank everyone for sticking around so long. Uh, I've got a lot of different video content uh, that I want to release and different things that I want to show. These videos for me are just a way I can try to help a lot of the new guys. I know a lot of the guys that have been in the field as long as me already know a lot of these things. And I'm not saying I'm the best or I'm the greatest or anything like that. And, you know, I get questioned all the time, why are you even doing this? And to be honest with you, I really enjoy the satisfaction of being able to help somebody. You know, when I first started out, I didn't get a whole lot of help from a lot of people. And uh, either they didn't know or they didn't want to tell you. And I, I think that's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life, the insecurity of not wanting to help other people. If you're trying to better yourself by watching videos online, that's great. You know, it, more power to you. There's no reason not to try to become better at what we do. I watch the same videos you guys watch in hopes of learning a new trick or, uh, or an idea on how to do it. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. If there's something you liked, didn't like, by all means, either email me or leave a comment down below. Once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.